Hey guys, it's Fiden. Today I've come up with a zebra sponge cake recipe. Lately I've been putting a lot of snacks recipes and many of you have asked to put cake recipes. So that's the reason I've come up with another cake recipe. It's a really delicious sponge cake. I've already uploaded a normal sponge cake recipe so if you want that I'll leave a link in the description down below. But this is just a little bit different. The same batter, we're just dividing it into two, coloring one with cocoa powder and then just layering it according to the zebra impressions. It's a really delicious cake but I don't like it that much. My brothers just keep telling me to make it all the time and that's the reason I thought I'll just film a video of it. So you can see when we're cutting it, it's super soft. It's just really really soft with all the air bubbles and as it is a sponge cake, there are certain things you should follow that you will get a perfectly spongy sponge cake. And another important thing, we're not adding any baking powder or baking soda or any chemicals in this cake. It's just eggs. Eggs are a really good baking agent. It just rises really well. And as we're beating in a lot of air into these eggs, it will expand in the oven when it is baking and it will rise really well. So it's really easy to make. So I'm telling you everything in this video. So without any further ado, let's get on to making it. First up, we have to beat our egg whites. For that here, I have four eggs and I'm going to separate them. So I'm just going to crack the egg into one bowl and then just use my hands and go back and forth and separate the yolk from the white. And always make sure do not have any yolk in your whites. If there is even a little bit of yolk in the white, the egg whites will not whip up really well. And there won't be any stiff peaks. So make sure you don't have any yolks in the egg white. And here the eggs are separated. For time being, let's keep the egg yolks aside. We need that later, but first we're going to whip up our egg whites. For that, I'm using a hand beater. You can use a stand mixer also, but then it's going to be a bit hard with whisk because it'll take a long time, but anything you want, it's fine. You just want to bring it to stiff peaks. And into it, I'm going to add in the sugar. So totally I have half a cup of sugar but then only one fourth cup goes into the egg whites and the rest of the one fourth cup will go into the egg yolks. So you need it divided. One fourth cup for the egg whites and one fourth cup of sugar for the egg yolks. Add that in gradually. One fourth cup of sugar just add it in gradually and then continue beating it to stiff peaks form. So here you can see it has come to soft peaks but the peaks are a little bit droppy so that's the reason you have to continue beating to stiff peaks. Here as you can see they have come to stiff peaks position and I'm going to set the egg whites aside and use the same hand, hand beater to just beat up our egg yolks. So let's set the egg whites aside and bring in the egg yolks. Start beating the egg yolks and gradually add in the rest of the 1 4th cup of the sugar that we saved earlier also very gradually and then you just have to continue beating it until it turns to a light and fluffy texture and also the size should double the color should be a pale yellow so just continue beating till it comes to a pale yellow color I've added in all the sugar and just continue beating And there it has reached to a pale yellow color. At this point, I'm just going to off my hand beater and set it aside. We don't need the hand beater anymore. All we're going to do is fold it in slowly. As this is a sponge cake, do not use the hand beater anymore. If you use it, the cake will not be soft because we're going to beat all the air bubbles out if you use the hand beater. So we need a spatula and then I'm going to add in the oil. I have three tablespoons of oil, four tablespoons of milk and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Vanilla extract is a compulsory thing in this because we're adding four eggs and we don't want the egg taste to be shown up a lot. That's the reason we're adding two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Just fold that in slowly. Take your time and fold it. Do not over mix it and beat out all the air bubbles. If you do, the cake will not be spongy. Next, we're going to add in all our dry ingredients and always make sure to sift your dry ingredients so that it is easily foldable because there will be lumps. 
half a cup plus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, one eight teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of corn flour. The corn flour will make the cake a little bit more spongier and also really soft. Sift that in and then just fold it gently. Do not over mix the batter. You don't want to be folding out any air bubbles. Always take your time and just slowly mix it. Any sponge cake, slowly just fold it in. So here uh, the egg yolks batter is ready and into it we're going to add in the egg whites. I'm going to add one third of the egg whites first. So now is the part you need to be very careful not to beat out any air bubbles. As this is a cake without any rising agents like baking powder or baking soda, egg and the air bubbles in the egg are the only rising agents here. So if you beat out the air bubbles, it will not be spongy. These air bubbles are gonna just expand in the oven and make your cake spongy. So always be slowly and calmly doing it. Just fold it in really well, but slowly. Just take your time and do it. So just continue adding the rest of your egg whites and keep folding it in the same way. Just very patiently take your time. And here my batter is slowly folded in and it's perfectly done. I'm going to divide this into two parts. One is going to be the chocolate and the other is going to be the vanilla. If you're not planning to make a zebra impression cake, you can just right away bake it without adding any cocoa powder or dividing it. It will turn out perfectly good. So here I've divided it and into one I'm going to sift in two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Always make sure to sift it because there are large lumps in the cocoa powder and when you over mix it to dissolve all the cocoa powder you will beat out all the air bubbles that's the reason you need to keep sifting it so just in the same technique keep folding it slowly without beating out any air bubbles And here my chocolate sponge batter is ready so all we have to do is just spoon it into the baking pan and make the zebra impressions. So here I have a baking pan for that. This is a 6 inch baking pan which I'm using and it is 3 inches tall. I've lined it with parchment paper and greased it with oil. I'm just gonna spoon in my batter. First up is vanilla. So 3 tablespoons of vanilla. Just spoon that in right in the middle and on top of that you have to pour in two teaspoon uh, tablespoons of chocolate batter when you're pouring in three tablespoons of vanilla you need to pour two uh, tablespoons of chocolate that is because the chocolate if the if there is a lot of chocolate then it won't turn into the perfect zebra impression that's the reason you need less of chocolate and always make sure to just spoon it right in the middle at this point you might feel like it is very less of chocolate but then just keep doing this and after it's baked and cut into it you will see how perfect it will turn out. So spoon it right into the middle and continue doing the same thing until all the batter is over. So here I've spooned in all the batter, I'm just going to set it aside. Just tap it quite a few times and it is ready to go into the oven but before that we have to put it in a water bath. It's always good to keep your sp sponge cakes in water bath because the water bath will rise the temperature of the sponge cake really well and it will bake out perfectly. So here I have a foil paper, I'm just going to cover the bottom of my cake. 
um, so that none of the water will get in. If the water gets in, it will get soggy. That's the reason we don't want that. And here I have another pan. I'm just going to pour around one fourth of it with water. We don't want over water. If it is there, it will bubble in the oven and there are chances to splash out the water into the cake. That's the reason we, want, we don't want that. So keep the cake on top of the water bath and just put it into a preheated oven of 150 degrees for around an hour. The timing will differ according to your oven. Only because we're putting it in a very low temperature, we need to keep it in one hour. So if you're putting it in a high temperature, the air bubbles will kind of pop out. That's the reason put it in very low temperature and bake it. I'm just going to insert a skewer and check whether it's done. If it comes free of batter and crumbs, you know it's ready. And let's just let it cool completely before we take it out of the pan. If you take it right hot away, then there are chances the cake will get turned. As it is a sponge cake, it's too soft. Before that, let's just take out the foil paper and let it cool completely in the pan itself. And here the cake is cooled and once the cake is cooled, it will automatically just release out from the sides and it will be very easy to take out. So let's remove the spring form and here it is. Now you can't see any zebra impressions, that's cause you have to cut into the cake. Let's remove the bottom tin and also the parchment paper. The parchment paper comes right away. So I'm just gonna flip it over and show you how it looks inside. Let's cut into it with a knife. That's done. Let me show you how it looks inside. So already you can understand that it's really spongy and you can see the zebra impressions. It's totally ready. It's very spongy. It's super delicious. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked it. And if you did, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up down below. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thanks once again and bye-bye.